Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh man, are we ready for the trial today? I'm ready for some pasta. <laughs> That's what I'm ready for. <laughs> you gotta go to the wet noodle. Anyhow, we're, we're going to turn about goodbyes. Day free trial. So second trial period. And we're going to be seeing the old man on the stand. December 27th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. We'll also get more Von Karma. Blah. Blah. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here, anyway? <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Nothing to say. Uh. Er, uh, very well, no opening statement, is he dead? so. Not so fast, oh, judge. Okay. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. A very long pause. Right, pause. of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Uh. <laughs> uh. What? <laughs> order, order! Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah! Must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. R right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. <laughs> He's still asleep. Witness, state your profession. Mm, er, I, I am uh, the owner and proprietor of the restaurant The Wet Noodle at Gordon Red Lake. And I uh, also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Er, uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Raising objection. objection. <laughs> Let it slide. <laughs> Wait a minute! The witness hasn't stated his name yet! Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright! Bah! I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes! Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate! You're right! Knowing your name is... <laughs> the witness will state his name. <laughs> On second thought, I guess it doesn't really matter. Does it matter?! What are you thinking, Nick?! What if that old man has something to do with the DL6 incident? If we don't find out who he is, we won't be able to build a case here! Hmm, she has a point. Wait a minute! The witness hasn't stated his name yet! Because I didn't and ask him, Mr. Wright! Bah! Didn't you listen to me in the alternate timeline? Please! Stop asking trivial questions and just let me win! You're right! The witness will state his name. Uh, mm, well, er, uh, I'm not really sure, uh, yep. What do you mean? My, er, uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. That's mm, sad. He can't recall, you say? Wait, but he can recall his daughter's name, Meg and Keith. Mm, yeah, that's a little odd. Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness? Oh boy! Witness testimony did not the murder when I was in the noodle shop. <laughs> it was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, yep. I was in the restaurant where I, uh, rent boats, as usual. Then I heard a bang, I yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just a-floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. Uh... I have several questions about this. Number really? one, wouldn't he have known that someone took the boat, or were they just like, Let's take the boat! Woo! <laughs> like, you would have seen the people. One. The more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking that Edgeworth and Hammond must have just taken the boat. Must have just taken the boat and be like, not, Hey, not, man, not, let's take the boat. The pri he, they probably thought he was asleep, because it was midnight, and they are just like, It's fine. His lights must have been on. 
Hmm. He had to have seen. Well, I don't know. They, well, Phoenix and Maya thought the shop was boarded up when they walked by earlier. Very true. So it could have been like, they're like, well, boats are here. Shop's closed. Let's just do this. Hmm. Very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. He's like, three minutes. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. You're Ergo, stupid. no need for a cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict, now! Er, uh, yes. M Mr. Wright, cross-examine, cross don't cross-examine! <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> do that. And He's idiot. right. That testimony sounded pretty solid. Maybe I should hold back. But Nick, you have to cross-examine him! This is your only chance to turn this trial around! Your last chance! Uh, oh, right. <laughs> Whoa! I was not expecting that! <laughs> Neither was I! <laughs> what are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness! Hmm. Very well, you may begin. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. <laughs> I didn't really know what it's to like do a for lion. that. No, it's great. It was the nine to twenty-four. Oh yeah, yep. <laughs> just after midnight, you say? Uh, yep, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Uh, yep. Well, that's cool. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. I asked him, and he remembered. Isn't that right? I always. <laughs> Don't glare at me like that. I er, I remembered it clearly. I did. Uh, yep. You see, continue. He might have narcolepsy. Maybe that's why he's always asleep. I was in the restaurant. <laughs> Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Yeah, it is. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Ah, uh, your honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy! Keith? Objection! <laughs> the prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in his shop. Witness, please continue. Well, at least he admits it. Well, I heard a bane, but it might have just been a firework. <laughs> and where did the bane seem to come from? From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? He's got uh, weird eyebrows. Uh, yeah. Good. Continue. The who? The old man? No. The... Oh, um, Von Karma? Yeah. When I looked out the window, I saw the boat floating on the lake. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. That makes sense. But I figure there was two men out there, uh, yep. But you couldn't see them clearly. Uh, yep. At the time, that is. At the time? Well, maybe he gave them the boat. Maybe. So you heard two gunshots total? Uh, yep. <clears throat> That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. By your window? Uh, yep, by my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the men's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Why did you look I so have a evil? bad feeling about this. Another Star Wars reference. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Uh, are you sure? Dad! They're like, what? Dead certain, Keith! <laughs> he said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Perfect. <laughs> They're like, uh... Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him! That Edgeworth boy! What? Uh... Uh... <laughs> what just happened? This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Literally. 
Nick! I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us! It'd be, I better act quick or this trial's going to be over. Raise an objection. Wait and see what happens. Raise an objection. But how can I raise an objection without any proof? You just fake it till you make it. Right? Judge, there is no room for doubt in the witness's testimony. I demand that you declare your verdict. Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Uh, let's raise an objection back here. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's court that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Yeah. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun, and the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly! That is easily explainable! He could have simply wiped his prints after he fired! Uh... You why are ignoring you have, the truth of the matter. Why would you have a wipe on there? <laughs> I, I never leave how he wipes his glue with his cravat. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be ridiculous. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. I think it's hilarious Judge how this is lost guy. In thought. I think it's hilarious how this guy is um was his mentor, so to speak, Edgeworth's mentor, and he's like, no, this guy's totally guilty, evil boy. Well, yeah, he he really only cares about getting a perfect record. Stupid. I can't see any room to raise an objection. I better hold back and see how things develop. Nick, we have to do something! If we stay quiet now, Mr. Edgeworth will be found guilty for sure! It's no good! There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please? Can you hear me, sis? Please? We need your help. Nick needs you. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, fifteen minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Wow, don't rub it in. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. Oh, he fell asleep. I thought he fell backwards in shock or something. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial, nor is there any need for more time to decide this case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? what No! Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, guilty. Well, I mean... The accused will surrender to the court immediately, to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. The court is adjourned. Is that it? Wait! What? Who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? What? <laughs> Larry? <laughs> what are you doing here? Listen, you, you gotta listen to me. I, I was, I was there in the park the night of the murder. I, I wasn't sure about it until yet just yesterday, but, but today I remembered it. Was he drunk? <laughs> remembered <laughs> what? The gunshot. I heard it too. I love how Larry's <laughs> just like running in like, <laughs> wait a second. Order. Man, I'm so glad we didn't go set. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot. That night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Uh, anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. Uh, it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. <laughs> Bet you didn't see this coming, did you? No. <laughs> order! Order! Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge! You've already given your decision! For trial's over! Nick! This is it! Larry's given us one final chance at this! She's right! If only it wasn't Larry! He can make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared gu guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. Right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him out. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. He's stupid. Hmm. Hey, Judge. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. Woo! What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Whew. 
That was close. I did not think that would go well. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? <laughs> the court will adjourn for a five minute recess. That's barely enough time to go to the bathroom. And that's only if you like are a guy using the urinal, basically. Wow. <laughs> After that, we will- use the bathroom in five minutes. Okay. It Maybe. just depends on how long the line is. <laughs> and how, how fancy you are dressed up, I suppose. Eh. After that, we will hear this new witness. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I don't want to be gross, but sometimes you got to go, and sure. sometimes you got to be in there for a while. I, I don't know. No, I... Court is adjourned. I don't know how big a court bathroom is. <laughs> so... I through I. District uh, December twenty seventh, ten twenty eight a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number Two. Hey, bro. <sighs> that was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. <laughs> I've seen worse. Wow. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweaty bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake last night? Yeah. Well, he was at the lake last night, but also that night. <laughs> he said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It, it's the nothing. Obvious. <laughs> hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. Yeah, that makes sense. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick! No ten minute trial this time! We'll milk this one for all it's worth! Hey, it was fifteen minutes! Fifteen! Everything depends on Larry now. <laughs> oh boy. December oh, 27th, 10.35 a.m. District Court Courtroom number 3. It's Be only been 18 minutes? Yes! Wow! Oh man. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right! Leave it to me! Please, Larry, don't mess this one up! <laughs> I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma looks so sour. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Von Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Witness testimony, the night of the murder. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and I uh, uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the, the boat back into the rental shop dock. Okay, so we were, people were just <laughs> stealing the boat through the boat rental shop. But at least they brought it back. Yeah. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. One gunshot. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any matter, Mr. Wright, you, begin your, may, begin the, 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 you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. True dat. Cross-examination. The night of the murder. That hey. night, I was out on the boat on the lake. Yeah. Did you steal this boat? <laughs> Something wrong, Mr. Wright? There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah, uh, um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 o'clock when I went out in the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? 
I was looking for something and I found it. That's me. Looking for something? Uh, yeah! Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. You know, it wouldn't surprise me <laughs> one bit if that was the truth. <laughs> this is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Fuck, I is so done. Yep. <laughs> so we just he wanted back. three minutes, so. <laughs> yeah. What if, like, Von Karma actually had, like, an appointment somewhere that he's like, Oh, the drill will be over in three minutes! Come on! <laughs> and then he's like, I'm missing my spa appointment! Duh! <laughs> he wouldn't need it after this. <laughs> Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figure I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12 o'clock. Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face! I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. <laughs> I don't. I never wear a watch. Well, yeah. Th these days, in our current days, we use cell phones to tell the time. Or Apple watches. Ugh. Yeah. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. Well, this is about as vague as... <laughs> I looked out over the lake. As the April the boat. May. Yeah, pretty much. You know? You know? <laughs> wasn't there a boat on the lake? Weren't you order, the boat order. On the lake? Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing my spa day. <laughs> How would, hold up. How would this guy go to the spa? Is it like, yeah, okay, we're gonna like give you a foot massage. And he's just like, <laughs> back I need, I need my toes massaged. Prepare the sauna. I need. <laughs> I can see Von Karma getting like the facial of the cucumbers over his eyes. I can see him trying to get a back massage, and he's like, you're not digging deep enough. Give me a salt rub. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> Why does he sound like Bowser? Oh yeah, Mario, that's the stuff. OBJECTION! <laughs> I think no, Valkarma's no, more no. deeper than Bowser. <laughs> Valkarma's basically Bowser if he smoked a pack a day. <laughs> yes, yeah, basically. So you only heard one Bane, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. So, did you see where it was? One gunshot? Yep. <laughs> Lada heard two sounds like gunshots. Like I said, she shot her own gun to trigger her camera! <laughs> Wait a sec, Larry! What? You only heard one bane, you're sure? That's what I said! But Miss Lada Hart testified yesterday that she heard two banes. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? I'm telling you, they were partying. <laughs> were you paying attention to at all to what they just said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? <laughs> wow. Mr. Butts? What? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? <laughs> I love that thinking face. He's like, uh... Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Not sure? How can you not be sure? Yeah, well... I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Probably... Something... else? My radio, dude! On my headphones! Wow. What?! <laughs> <laughs> Order, order, and stop that booing! <laughs> Mr. Butts, you were listening to a radio on earphones? Y yeah, so what? Is that a crime? I listen to my radio, everybody listens to the radio, what's the big deal? Wow. Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? That's enough, or continue. <laughs> Well, if we say that's enough, it's done, so... Let's, let's get that over with first. 
No, I think I've heard enough. This is all too embarrassing. In fact, I think we've all heard enough. What are you saying, Nick? If you stop now, Mr. Edgeworth will be found guilty! We have to turn this trial around now! Uh, Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio! <laughs> right! Leave it to me! I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. <laughs> witness, one, or witness testimony will later. Are we heard. going back to the safe state or no? No, that just brings you right to oh, like okay. that. Please let him continue. Okay. It's fully being alone on Christmas Eve! That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to a real loud, booming loud, like... But, I'm heard, sure I heard that gunshot. Really. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. That's it? <laughs> How about you say what... <laughs> you were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? <laughs> I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. <laughs> Judge... Can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor! The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. That guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd sense. like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. V very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Cross-examine what this Larry really heard. Fun, <laughs> yeah, I told you this trial was great. It's fun to be on Christmas Eve. Couldn't you Skype, Keonse? So, you turned on the radio? Right! I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? <laughs> You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone! I'm not Keonce. I shouldn't have said anything. She's in Hawaii on the photo shoot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I was call. listening to an all request show on the radio. <laughs> what? I can't she believe didn't... she didn't call him on Christmas Eve like, Merry Christmas! You go, girlfriend! <laughs> I'm gonna go back and shoot some more. <laughs> He's gonna make her sound like she's at a gun range. <laughs> <laughs> gonna shoot some more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sound he heard. He called Keonce and she's like, I'm at the gun range. <laughs> that would be the stupidest thing ever. Stupidest thing <laughs> Do you ever. have any chance? Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? I wouldn't know. This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to it real booming loud, like. Real <laughs> booming loud. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. And you had headphones on? Yep. How is that? You're not totally shy. <laughs> I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. Well, is he using the ones that completely cover your ears, like mine? Or was he just wearing like, the was it like headphone Con headphones? ones? Or is it like the ones where like you get in the car and you're like about to go green at the light, but some person comes next to you and they're like... <laughs> 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 She's like, like the car is literally rocking up and down. And you're like, okay, how loud I'm is that? I'm pretty sure volume? that only ha happens in Huckleberry House no, cartoons. No, I'm not kidding. I was in the car, and my friend's car was ahead of mine, and it li the car was literally going up and down to the beat because she had think, put extra speakers in the car. I think maybe the suspension on that car. Is no, just no, she had put extra. Um, speakers in the back, so oh it made it bump up and down, but I was like, okay. That's not healthy. Yeah, it's not healthy at all. Mythbusters did a myth on that once, where it's a could of the speakers in the back of one of those cars trigger a gunshot. Uh, did it? <laughs> They're like, it, I think it could, but it had to be, like, so loud that, like, everybody nearby would go deaf. <laughs> Can you prove that? No. No, of course you can't. Nah, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came real back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. What did he say? What did he say? <laughs> Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. That's not pointless. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. 
I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We, we should don't care. care. We should care. Why should we care? <laughs> why should we care? Because maybe it'll, like, if it's quiet, <laughs> then maybe he could hear it better. But, <sighs> I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Hmm, right. I didn't really have a deep reason for asking now that I think about it. Understood, Your Honor. I withdraw my question. Continue your examination of the witness, then. This is getting nowhere. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press until I get to the bottom of what happened. <sighs> well, let's try it. We should care, Your Honor! Of course we should! Why? Uh... <laughs> well, how do you know if we don't ask? <laughs> Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when he said, Hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? Yeah. Of course I am. She had this real sexy <laughs> voice. Oh, of course, it was a female teacher. It's almost time for Christmas. Hmm, maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. What radio station was he listening to? Most I, that's probably the radio station that plays Santa Baby. Santa Baby. <laughs> Worst Christmas song ever. No, there's some pretty bad ones. As, along with the Christmas Shoes song and I Farted yeah. on Santa's Lap. Yeah. Those are the worst. Those are really bad. But there's oh, other wait, ones. I saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. That's also nice, bad. Nice. <laughs> anyway. Whereas the best ones are the traditional church hymns. Well, there's also some other good ones. Oh, yeah. Jingle Bell Feliz Rock. Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad is great. Uh. Do you see where it is? It's the parrot! No, um... Uh, was this the DJ? It's almost question Christmas, what? <laughs> that would be hilarious if it was. <laughs> um... Turns out it was my Maya's mother who said it. <laughs> uh, was a lady who said it? Yeah. Not Gordy, not Overhead Matt. Uh... Not is it seriously the parrot? <laughs> well, how would that even make sense? Well, he got off the boat. He's hanging out still near the lake, so he has to be near the boat rental shop. The parrot could be like, Eh, it's time to for Christmas! But he heard him through his headphones. It's easy to tell if it's through headphones or not. Like, he knew the gunshot. He knew, like, that wasn't part of the DJ's Turns out thing. the bird is a robot. It's all about Christmas. Beep bop, beep bop. Beep. The Atari's page. Oh, uh, I have literally no idea. You don't? Alright. It's almost Christmas. It's Lana's deposition. She heard him after midnight on Christmas. If it's oh, almost Christmas, it's still Christmas that's, Eve. That's still Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? That makes sense. Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you should know I don't scare that easy. <laughs> Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, <laughs> when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies we've heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas! This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Nice posture, Larry. Oh yeah. Order! Order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness said he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim that he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's wrong. Larry's right. If there were two gunshots, Larry... Larry's right. <laughs> what? What's if they say Larry's wrong? Well, I guess it had to have been Larry's mistake. Ha! Huh. Very well. Wait, wait, wait! I come up here, I give you riveting testimony, and you laugh it off as some kind of mistake? What about me? 
How can you call yourself a friend, Nick? How? Get used to disappointment! <laughs> wow. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim he heard the gunshot before- <laughs> Are you serious? Wow. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have some evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence that there was a gunshot before midnight. Do you know what it is? One of the photos, I bet. So oh, we, so we get that one, and we will. No, hold on. Show me every single photo. I want it. Two twenty-five or twelve twenty-five. Yep. Keep going. Ha! Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December twenty-fourth, eleven fifty p.m. Oh yeah. Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor. The real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Someone must Your have shot Honor? something outside of it. This photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct! There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50pm. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words... When Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Were you trying to say something? No, I was just thinking. Okay. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Wait, what? I was not expecting that. But... Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. But it could have. Hey! My nose was clear that night, man! Clear! <laughs> hmm. It doesn't matter. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50pm was indeed a gunshot? Yeah, because Maya sneezed and it <laughs> didn't work. No, it sneezed and it did take the pictures. No, but that was the second time when she fixed it. Yeah, but that doesn't prove that... At 11.50... Okay, let's take a look. Alright, so we got the attorney's badge. It's not gonna be bad. No. Sometime, 24th or 25th. Oh, shoot, I just realized. Yeah. I have been forgetting to present the evidence, <laughs> wrong evidence on these places. <laughs> Mr. Wright, is that a smirk I see? Er, your honor, sorry, I wasn't really sure about the evidence. Don't show us evidence you aren't confident in, Mr. Wright. Oh. Alright. Okay, I had to keep, do it. keep looking. Alright, so see the Lattice photos. camera. Okay. Yep. Okay, 1215. Taken. Nope. Yeah, it was taken at but we already showed that. Okay. No. Uh no. Okay. Fired three times. You wanna try that? Sure. Nope. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Okay, I got it. Order, order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However... This leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly! If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? This could be as ridiculous as SAO. Where there's literally an episode where, like, someone, two people fake their own death by, like, holding a weapon behind their back for, like, 25 minutes. 
It's really, no, it is ridiculous. They, like, took complete advantage of how, like, you, your HP does not deplete in, like, a town. It was really interesting, but it was one of those where I was like, hmm. Like, it made me immediately think of that, because I'm like, I wonder how they planned the, the death, the murder, that mm. kind of thing. Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case of the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Y yes If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict! We have nothing <laughs> to lose! You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor? Y yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So you finally realized the truth. There could be no other murderer here than Miss Miles Edgeworth himself. Ron Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and Robert Hammond fell into the sea. The sea? <laughs> the distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well... The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before he was shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat. The murderer and Hammond, Edgeworth and the murderer, or Edgeworth and Hammond. It can't be Edgeworth and Hammond. So, and Edgeworth is on the boat, so it has to be Edgeworth and the murderer. Yeah, that's right. What happens if we actually select the other things? Miles Edgeworth and Robert Hammond. Yes, I believe you are mad. That is exactly what I've been telling the court this whole time. <laughs> You're agreeing with me. And yet, what did you just say? That Robert Hammond had been killed 25 minutes before the shot on the boat? Y yes that's what I said. I was just testing you, Von Karma. <laughs> Mr. Wright, your client has already been declared guilty once. I'm going to have to penalize you for this foolishness. <laughs> bah, I'll ask you again. Who's on the boat? It was the murderer and Robert Hammond. What are you saying? That contradicts what you just told the court. You said that Robert Hammond had been killed 25 minutes before the gut shot. Y yes, that's right. Also, might I mention, the defendant Mr. Edgeworth has admitted to being on that boat. <laughs> uh, right, your honor. Crash and burn. Mr. Wright, your client has already been declared guilty once. <laughs> Alright, yeah, you got it. It's Edgeworth and the murderer. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Ro Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Is it guys or geese? Geese? I thought it was guys. Wh what? Are you serious? What yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. L ludicrous Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Miles Edgeworth, lot of heart. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you think it's I don't know? Yeah, well, it's not... 
Miles Edgeworth, and it's not a lot of heart. I'm sick of fuck, that's a really dumb answer. I might get a laugh or two out of the crowd, but that's about it. Uh, Nick, something on your mind? Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wright, stop laughing and tell us who the murderer is. <laughs> yes, your honor. <laughs> The murder is not over the Miss Vada Hart! The investigative photographer? Um, yes. You're saying that this young lady dressed up like Robert Hammond and fooled <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> yes, well, she did look sort of manly. <laughs> I am ashamed I actually listened to this utter nonsense. <laughs> Listen, you came to this conclusion based on a piece of evidence. That is this photograph taken at 1150. If you didn't have this photograph, you never would have made this claim. Correct? And just who was it who went out of her way to give you that piece of evidence? <laughs> it was... Vada Hart. Why would the murderer go to all that trouble just to deliver you decisive evidence? Yeah. I guess... Uh... They wouldn't. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I'm going to penalize you for this. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know? Bah! Again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. Aww? The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. Uh... At 11.50, he was the only one who killed Robert Hammond. Maybe I could see that. The caretaker of the boat shop? W where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not in a boat? What? W well then, where did the murder take place? Where did it, Marty? Um. Uh... <laughs> the same right on stand. <laughs> you should try that. Alright. Just for fun. Just for funsies. Around here, maybe? Around where? You have some reason for thinking this? Yes, well, maybe because there's no good reason the murderer knew we'd never suspect it! <laughs> <laughs> Try again. He wasn't even surprised I goofed up. <laughs> Do you know where the actual murder took place? Then? Um, it needn't be close enough where Lada could, um,. Take the photo, and close enough that Larry would hear it after getting out of the boat. So maybe, like, behind the house? Wanna try that? Well, not there. Okay. Oh, well. whoops. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet the victim without anyone seeing. That's true. Actually, that would make sense. Do you have any proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night, he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In oh. other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. I'm glad Larry came in now. Mr. Wright! What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes Your Honor. Sorry. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. But he's still alive. Yep. Then who fired the pistol on the boat? Did my Edgeworth or the boat take a uh, shot caretaker? Uh... Well, Mr. Edgeworth didn't fire... He, he picked it up afterwards because he was so shocked. Right. So I think it's the boat shop caretaker. Yeah, it was, but <laughs> it was Miles Edgeworth. Nick! How could that be? Wasn't the old man holding the pistol? Uh, yeah. Good thinking. That was easy, Nick. 
What I'm worried about is what you're thinking! Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice, both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice, because the first shot missed, to create a witness. To create a witness? Yep. B because the first shot missed? Missed? Yeah, he was aiming for Edgeworth and he missed. What are you saying? Did you not just tell us that he missed Edgeworth on purpose? <laughs> huh? Oh, uh, right. Uh-oh. I better figure out what <laughs> just what it is I'm trying to prove here. <laughs> I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... He just jumps off. The murderer jumps from the boat himself. Leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. Now it makes him. sense why he's like, what the heck just happened? Mm -hmm. You also called it, you're like, I bet like Vada just swam through the water, and I'm like, but it's super cold, you're so what? People are weird. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they People are. People are weird. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and threw the body into the lake. That is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff! Bring out the witness from before! The boat shop caretaker, quickly! Alright. I want to hear what he has to do with DL6. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant Miles Edgeworth a few questions. Oh boy. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Hey, what's up? Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the wake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared! He isn't at the boat shop, either. What? Oh, 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 okay. What? <laughs> if the... He's disappearing. Just like how my face mom's disappearing, maybe they're in coops. Oh! That'd be amazing. <laughs> or if they were the same person, like, in Maya's mother's just like, Uh, okay, I'm gonna be an old man. <laughs> she got one of them f cool rubber masks from the Halloween <laughs> store. <laughs> what should I do? Find him, quickly! We cannot allow him to get away! Edgeworth's just like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's getting good. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared! A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm... It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, oh the gosh. final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? I missed my spa day! <laughs> One more feed. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well, court is adjourned. December 27th, 122 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else! Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. 
sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's on us, uh, it's us on trial instead of your clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax! I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. W what do you mean? Right, there's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Tell us! Edgeworth? Yeah, this could be like, to be on the next episode. <laughs> no, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm, can't make up my mind. Just tell us, man. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. I see. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Uh... Did he kill his own father? That'd be even more ridiculous. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that ever, <laughs> but... I wouldn't recommend killing, wouldn't your, own recommend killing your own father. Well, but I'm like... I wonder if there was a reason. Like, because here's the deal. He's, what, like, nine? When you're a child and, like, you have a gun in your hands, you have literally no idea what the heck's going to happen. You also probably don't know how to use it properly and no, safely. No, you don't. So, yeah. That'll be interesting. Tune in next time on Phoenix Ray Ace Attorney. Next investigation period, I'm pretty sure we can get in uh, one video. Okay. And that's where, holy cow, a lot of stuff is going to happen. Like, a lot of stuff is going to happen. Anyhow, if you think the trial's over, no, not even by a long shot. We've we still only scratched the surface mm -hmm. of this. Anyhow, hope to see you then. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.